And so, welcome everybody to Superhero Saturday. And if you're not wearing any superhero gear, you are superheroes just for showing up. I'm so happy to be leading everybody through this again today. So we're gonna start with a good warm up. If you happen to have a jump rope, grab a jump rope and do and jump that while we do our jumping jacks because I personally know jumping jacks can get a little bit boring. So, but let's give it a go. Let's do some 15 jumping jacks, all right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, let's pull our knees in up towards our chest. Call these some knee huggers. All right, one more each side. If you're just joining us, let's start loosening up. We're gonna do some Frankenstein kicks. One hand is reaching to the opposite toe. Very good. I like to get a little bit of 80s aerobics moves into my warm up. So let's squat and kick back. Open up those hips and those quads and the shoulders getting into it. All right, hands on the hips are nice big hip circles. I've had some requests ahead of time for some hip strengthening, some hamstrings, some core and some cardio work. So that's what I mainly got going on today. There will be a variety of things and some, um, some of the stuff from last time that I got good feedback on as well. If you haven't reversed yet, please do so. All right, so we're gonna continue loosening up some of our other joints. What I wanna do is spread our feet nice and wide. We're gonna come down into a low lunge, but we're gonna bend forward and we're gonna just walk ourselves from side to side. I mentioned last week when we warm up, we wanna go through dynamic movements that are opening the joints and warming up the body, getting the blood flowing and not holding anything too long. We'll cool down and stretch more towards the end. Bring your feet in a little bit closer. We're gonna grab our toes and we're gonna drop our hips all the way down into a low squat and stretch it up. Again, this is gonna be some hip work at the bottom, loosening up those hamstrings. Let your head hang when your hips come up. Spine elongates as your hips come down. If it's comfortable for you, I'd like you to get into a tabletop position. Um, if not, you can stay standing. Um, I'll show you the tabletop exercise first. We're gonna come down on our knees and do some circles. These are called fire hydrants. Our knee is gonna lift side, move towards the back and come back around. While you're doing that, if it's uncomfortable to, uh, to get down your hands and knees, you can do the same motion, bringing your knee forward to the side, rotating back and down. So you're gonna do about three to five forward, and then you can reverse and then switch legs. I'm gonna see who's here and say hello to some people. Hey Lexi, hey Deb. Hope everybody is ready to have a good workout. I hope you're outside if you can be. Um, it is beautiful out, but my Wi-Fi is a little too sketchy outside, so I didn't want to do that. All right, once you finish the, um, the hip circles, I actually want everybody to take a seat, and we're gonna put our feet out in front of us with our feet on the ground and our knees up, and our hands out in front of us. And we're gonna drop our knees from side to side. The idea here is to keep your spine nice and straight, core is engaged, and we're just letting our legs fall naturally. If they don't go all the way down, don't force them. You might notice that with each one you do, you get a little bit further range of motion. And once again, this is for those hips. All right, and the last thing I like to do is a little fan kick. Let's put our hands on our hips. I'm gonna step onto my right foot Swing my left leg up and over, step on my left, swing my right leg up and over. Everybody's range of motion is gonna be a little bit different, but again, as you go on, you might find each one gets a little bit bigger as those hips crack and those tendons loosen up. All right, I'm nice and warm, I hope you are. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a lot of skating inspired movements today. 
and what I would normally call this if I was training someone would be a single leg deadlift. When I'm working with skaters, I like to call it a spiral tilt. I'm gonna start with our arms out to the side, standing up tall on one foot. I'm gonna show you the movement from the front and I'm gonna show it from the back. Our standing leg is strong, but not locked out. We don't wanna hyperextend the knee. We're gonna look for our balance point, hinge forward to square. Notice my shoulders are facing straight to you. My hips are down and I'm going to stand back up. From the side, you'll be able to see my hips are square forward. Even my standing leg, or my, I'm sorry, my extended leg is not fully locked out and my laces are facing the ground. So we're gonna do eight movements on each foot. Nice and controlled. If you lose your balance, restabilize and pick back up. When you're doing single leg exercises, the most important thing is to find a focal point. Don't watch yourself in a mirror or a camera because you're watching something's moving. Pick something beyond the camera in the distance. I have a lamp that's right behind it, so I'm gonna stare right out at that. I'm gonna stand up nice and tall, and we're gonna hinge one. Push the hips forward to stand back up. You should feel this in the hamstrings a little bit, and your ankle working to, working to stabilize. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Good. Now let's switch feet over to the right side. My right, you can be on your left, that's fine as well. One, oops, there's my loss of balance. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, very good. Now, here's a point where you can take either of your bands. We're gonna start with the stroking extension that we did two weeks ago. So let's take our loop bands. Now you have two options here. I'm gonna grab my flat band for my upper body. If you have lightweight dumbbells, I'm saying like three or five, you can also be holding dumbbells in your arms. We're going to take band to tension so we're getting that nice posture, skating style across our, our back. Shoulder blades are, are down and pinched together. Neck is long, belly button is in. And we're gonna go through those skating strokes again. We're pushing diagonal together, diagonal together. So give everybody just a second to get themselves situated. And we're gonna do 10 each foot. Ready, and stretch, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen and 20. Good, Whew. feeling that in my shoulders. All right, like I said, time to change costumes and universe. This is my uh, Wonder Woman look for you guys. So, now we're ready to work. Okay, so next thing might be um, a little bit more complicated, but we were here last week, it was pretty basic, so I'm gonna try to up it up a little bit this week. So we're going to go do two movements. I'm gonna push my right foot back for your freestylers like I'm reaching a toe in for a jump. I'm gonna bring my foot back together and I'm gonna hinge forward with my right arm, working the hamstring on my standing leg. This becomes a staggered stance deadlift. Now, if any of you have weights, this is gonna be your time to grab onto it. So if we're standing on our left foot, our right leg is gonna be our moving leg. Our resistance band, if we have them, is around the middle of our calves. And the weight is hanging directly in front of my right thigh. I'm going to stretch back, bring my foot back in, and I'm going to let the weight draw down my quad 
and straight down the line up with my big toe. I'm stopping where my back is flat, my hips are behind me, my head is straight forward. My hips are going to push myself up to my standing position and then I will repeat the movement. Okay? The hips pushing back and under basically emulates the power that we create when we jump. The deadlift from a weightlifting to a figure skating perspective is one of the most important movements. We take off in all our jumps where we load our hips back and we fire them under. The deadlift is actually uh, considered one of the most important moves in athletics because you see it in every sport. You see it when a football player lines up at the line of scrimmage, when a baseball player is um, over the mound ready for, or over the plate ready for the pitch, golfing, tennis. This is a really, really great movement. So if you can't catch on to it today, I suggest watching more videos and learning the importance of the technique of the movement. If you understand, let's give it a go. We're gonna do eight movements on each side. Extend back, together, hinge, stand. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Good, let's switch sides. I'm gonna do this side, I think facing the camera, just so you can get a little bit of a different perspective of my movement. You can see the squareness of my shoulders and the levelness of my hips and the range of motion where the weight is moving to and from. So ready, reach back, in, hinge and stand. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. And eight. Good. All right. I'm going to put the weight back down for this exercise and we can pick up the flat band again if you have it. We're going to move our loop band back up to your thighs. Also, if you don't have a loop band and you just have a flat band, this is a good time where you can take it and tie it around and just get a good double knot in there and you're going to get not quite the same resistance you would from a mini loop band, but at least it's going to be more than moving with your body weight. Okay. Right. Sorry, so we're going to hold on to these. So we're going to go through a checkout exercise. Obviously, this one's a little bit more geared toward free, uh, freestylers, but doesn't mean that just the movement itself isn't beneficial for your body. So we're going to do both sides because I'm sure there's some lefties out there. We're going to lift left leg as we're checking out and stretch back. So we're gonna do one foot at a time. So holding on strong to the band and stretch it back as you extend, trying to maintain balance through the whole movement. Knee up, check out. Knee up, check out. So we're gonna do, again, eight of those on each foot. Let me see who's saying hi. Um, hello to my skating club, Jersey Coast Figure Skating Club. Wanna give you guys a shout out. Thanks for supporting today. All right, up and check. That's one, up, two, knee up, three, up, four, up, five, up, six, up, seven, up, and eight. Good, shake those shoulders out because they're getting the extra work because they gotta work both times. Switch your balance side over to your left side. Knee up and check. Up, two, up, three, up, four, up, five, up, six, up, seven, up, and eight. Very nice. If you were stable on your off side, good for you. If you weren't, work on it. There is nothing wrong with making yourself as balanced and well-rounded as a skater as you can be. 
Okay, so now we're going to move to a little bit more leg work. And actually, if you want, you can also do this with the mini band around your upper knee, upper knees where we just had it. The first exercise we're gonna do, it's gonna be a little bit of strength and a little bit of plyometrics. Plyometric is an explosive jump um, that's used in any type of conditioning to work on our reaction in any type of sport. So this is really good for just that quick power out of our legs. So monster walk, hands are gonna be out in front and we're gonna be in kind of like a hovering squat. So I'm not quite as low as I'm capable of being, but I'm definitely down on my knees and I should already feel my quads starting to burn a little bit. I'm gonna take six small steps forward. One, two, three, four, five, six. When I get to the front, I'm gonna jump and take those steps in reverse. One, two, three, four, five, six, jump. All right, so we're gonna do the down and back five times. Before we get started, I'm gonna take a sip of electrolytes. How about everybody do the same? Because these are gonna be a little bit more high energy. I'm gonna make sure we have some hydration. And we're ready to go. If you haven't broken a sweat already, it's gonna happen in these next group, this next group of exercises. All right, hands in front. Body is nice and tall. Feet are wider than our shoulders. And we're in our squat and we're gonna go. One, two, three, four, five, six, jump. One, two, three, four, five, six, jump. That's one rep. One, two, three, four, five, six, jump. 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 We got two more. One, two, three, four, five, six, jump. One, two, three, four, five, six, jump. Last one, stay low. Two, three, four, five, six, jump, one, two, three, four, five, six, and jump. Good job. Do you feel it here? Because I do. Heart rate is up, that was a good one. Okay, again, keeping, keeping your band on if you have one, taking it off if you feel like you can't take it anymore. I want you to get through as comfortably as you can, learn where you need to challenge yourself, try it again next time with the bands on. So our next exercise is gonna be a small squat, wide squat. Feet are together. We're gonna to have the hands in front. I like to keep my arms here a lot in lower body workouts because it just helps me keep my upper body from dropping. If my hands are going down, I know my body's going down. So my body is up in front of me. This is my start position. I will show you the exercise from the side and the front so you can see the change in posture and the depth in my knees. I'm gonna jump from a narrow squat to wide squat. Narrow, wide. So from the side, you're seeing here. I'm not trying to change too much in my height, really keeping the legs working the whole time. The jump is light. This is not meant to be as explosive as a jump that we just did with the monster walks. So we're gonna do 10 jumps open, um, so a small and a large is one rep, and we'll do that 10 times. Ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, very good. Next exercise we're going to do, I know I did a lot of lunges last week, so I did try to keep some of that, try to keep my lunges low on a, less, but we definitely have two lunge exercises right now. So this, again, if you're incapable of jumping, this one, you don't have to do the jump at all. That's going to be up to you. Um, knees, ankles, any type of um, injury there. Just do the stationary part of the movement. So the movement has two parts. We're going to lunge 
forward, and then we're just gonna explode through that lunge and come back. So from the side, because you can see my feet better when I back up, I'm lunging forward, my body is nice and tall. I jump through the lunge, land back in that 90 degree knee bend of both knees, push up and stand. We'll do eight each leg. And then the next exercise is gonna be a reverse lunge that's also going to contain two parts, the movement and the hop. So again, I'll get quickly into demonstrating the second exercise so that we can have a little bit of a, um, a cardio challenge but know that you can omit the hop if you need to. So, starting with the left foot. Oh, very nice out there, Rory, I see. You know, if you don't have a band, you can either up the numbers, you can try to get a little bit lower with things. Um, in this case, if you don't have a band, it's still gonna really be difficult for the hops. So, left foot first, lunging forward. One, jump together. Left foot again. Two, jump together. So we're sticking with the same foot. Three, jump together. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and switch. Right foot. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Good. So the next exercise, you guys rest. I'm going to keep tiring myself out. We're going to do this one. We're going to take the band off because, well, if you're not jumping, Keep the band on. So watch while I demonstrate and then I will let you know. Sorry if my screen just sorry if my screen just disappeared. That was my husband trying to call me and he got declined. <laughs> so reverse. We're gonna stand up into that front leg. Power hop. So this is great for all you single skaters, really trying to make their axle sow better. So we're pushing through that standing leg when we switch feet. It's gonna be great for that kind of loop, flip, and lutz feeling, okay? Huh. Coach Steph is a little out of breath. All right. Ready. Same foot for all eight reps. Left foot. Left foot front, right foot back, and hop one. Two, I forgot to mention, if you're not doing the hop, just bring your feet together here. My apologies there. Five, six, seven, and eight. Switch feet. Again, if you're not jumping, just come to a reverse lunge stand. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Next section, everybody get some water right now. Water, catch your breath. We're going to be doing our cardio section. Originally, I had set a whole timer. Now all my devices are broadcasting my stream, so I'm gonna do my best to time off my watch, but our intervals are gonna be a little shaky, but that's okay, at least you'll get the drift of what we're doing. We're gonna do five different exercises. I will give you alternatives again if you can't do any type of jumping. Nothing is, I also have two exercises that do involve the wrists, but I have um, alternatives for that. So if you have a mat, now is a good time to roll it out. Okay, I'm gonna go through the first, the first exercises. We're gonna do a pop squat, which is basically like the movement of a jumping jack with no arms. Instead of the arms going overhead, we're gonna reach down to the ground. So we're gonna squat, jump our feet back together, jump them open and touch down. So the moment you're up, feet are together, hands are side by side. When your feet open, your body comes down, your, your legs bend down. We wanna keep the body strong. We're getting really deep into this squat, but keeping the back as straight as you can. You don't wanna reach 
out for the ground in front of you. We're trying to reach straight down underneath that long axis that's coming off from underneath the rib cage. That is exercise one. If you're uncomfortable with the jump, you can do a pulsing squat. Nice and quick, down, halfway up, down and stand. You'll get just as much, if not probably more burn in your legs through that. Skater hops, we're gonna go for the cross hop and the explosive jump upwards. Cross hop, single leg jump, hop, jump, hop, jump. Again, if you can't jump, I want you to go side lunge, up, side lunge, up, go to the other side, side lunge, up, side lunge, up. And if you get really confused with that, just sit into a nice super low Cossack lunge. You're still gonna get that same work on the inner thigh. Now, I'm gonna put burpees in there for people that like to do them. I like to do them. I think they're a great full body exercise. There's many ways to do them. You do not have to do the push up. You can do the push up. You can do the CrossFit version that comes all the way down with the high pop of the hips and jump. It is up to you. If you are not capable of that burpee, there's also what's called a reverse burpee where we sit down, we roll, we come back up to a standing position and we hop. If you're super against it, jumping jacks. Um, the next we're gonna do mountain climbers. So we're gonna be high plank position. Our knees are gonna come under our chest. If you cannot put pressure on your wrists, please come down to your forearms. In the forearms, you have the option of holding a plank, doing a plank jack where your feet are jumping side to side, or bringing your knees to your elbows. The choice is yours. And the final exercise of this little cardio circuit is gonna be cone hop, water bottle hop, resistance band hop, whatever you can put down. I'm just gonna, whatever you can put down on the ground, you can comfortably hop over without, um, without wor uh, worrying yourself about your ankles. Again, if you don't wanna jump, this would be a good time to do some nice, quick, low reverse lunges. So we're gonna do all those exercises. I will remind you which is, which is next. We're gonna do 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. Usually when you're doing cardio intervals, you wanna keep your rest period shorter than your work period, but we're throwing a lot, I'm throwing a lot at you today. So I figured let's just enjoy the rest time and understanding. Um, uh, you're welcome, Nicole. <laughs> Yeah, I know you and Aviva and I think um, Jessica have wrist issues, so I am kind of aware of trying to put those modifications in there. I also think reverse burpees are a lot of fun, so if you've never done them, give them a chance. I'll do both again when it comes up. Okay, so we're going to start in 10 seconds with the pop squat. Hands come down and feet are going to come together. And let's try to do as many as we can in this 20 seconds. So I'm not going to count you, but let's just move. Go. Touch together, touch together. Halfway there. And rest. All right, next exercise is gonna be the skater hops with the single leg hop. Remember, if you're not gonna do these, a good low Cossack lunge is just as good an alternative. Hi, Aviva. <laughs> yes, you've got the wrist issues too. <laughs> All right, are we ready for the skater hops? And begin, hops, reach and jump, reach, jump. More than halfway, five seconds left. That one went fast. And rest. Good. All right. This is where our burpees come in. Like I said, I'll do, I'm going to alternate between a reverse burpee and a regular one. 10 seconds, catch your breath. And by all means, if you need to skip it, skip it. I don't want anybody 
going too hard today and not being able to do anything tomorrow. All right, let's go. Burpee. Here's my reverse burpee. Roll back, come up, and jump. Regular burpee. Reverse. And rest. Whew. All right, we got two exercises left. I hope everybody's feeling it. Give me a little wave if you're if this one's getting your heart rate up. Okay, nobody, you're probably all just dying. It's fine. <laughs> all right, two more. So your mountain climbers, your mountain climber variations, and go. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, last rest period, last exercise. Please be careful. Also, if you don't wanna jump over any, anything, you can just jump over nothing, but still try to get that lateral movement. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's do it. seconds. Three, two, one. All right. Awesome work there. Water break for sure. The good news is everything now a little calmer. So we just did all the real hard work. Now we're going to do a little bit of strengthening of the hips and the hamstrings and the core. Don't worry. I did not forget. Whenever I start to struggle on a workout, I always think of all the, the training that these actors do when it comes time to play superheroes. I'm like, all right, if they can do it, that high intensity for like six days on, one day's off for six months, I can do, I can get through the next part of this workout. All right, back to the resistance band. This one, kind of important to have a loop band like I mentioned earlier, you can take your long band and tie it around your toes. If not, learn the exercise so that in the case that you do purchase or come across loop bands, you can add this one to your routine. We're gonna put the band right around our toes. So if you're like me and you're wearing Chuck Taylors, right where the laces stop is the ideal spot. And we're going to Take about a two foot push out to the side, really working to keep the toes in line, the knees on top of the ankles and come back together. You're going to notice a severe reflex on the re resistance band. The whole point of working with bands is to work against where they're pulling, resist their strength. So when you pick that put foot up as it's replacing itself, control it to come back in. Okay, so we're going to do 10, total uh, 10 each side, so 20 total steps. You should feel this on your outer hips and your glutes when you are done. We're gonna take the hands back up to the level they were at when we were doing some leg work earlier. Posture is nice and tall, okay? We wanna tuck that tailbone in, belly button in, spine as straight as you can. Hands are out and we're gonna step. One, slow, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I'm starting to feel it. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Whew. Okay. So from here, we're gonna take the band and put it around your ankles. Now, this is a time, I kinda didn't think of this earlier. If you have ankle weights, you can also do this 
exercise with ankle weights, I'm most likely gonna try to find a place where I can put my body where you can see me with this one. We're going to be laying in a forearm plank. So if my upper body ends up out of the screen, I'm stacked, shoulders on top, the elbows, my head is looking past my thumbs. We're gonna be doing hamstring curls. You can also do this without a band, so don't hesitate to give it a try. We're gonna come down, our feet are together. I need to put my elbows on a blanket. My feet are gonna be together, my body is nice and straight. I'm gonna take one leg and I'm going to curl up, trying to keep my knees parallel. If my knee drops, I'm not really working with my hamstring. I end up working more with my quad. We're gonna do 10 each side, one side after the other. So as soon as we hit 10, one is gonna happen on the next foot. All right, hips are up, head is straight forward. Uh, quads are engaged and we bend one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, great job. That one's tough. You're not only working your hamstrings, but you're working your core. What a wonderful pairing, right? Okay. You guys, I hope nobody stood up because I'm just looking back at my, uh, my list of things to do. Okay, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna do a single leg glute bridge with a leg raise. So again, multiple parts are gonna go to work. We're gonna target the glutes and the hamstrings of the supporting leg, the core and the quad of the moving leg. The challenging part on this exercise is to keep our hips the entire duration. Keep our hips elevated, excuse me. So our feet are gonna come in, and please watch before you get into this. And we're gonna prep ourselves, really making sure those hips are pushed up. And we're gonna take our foot that's gonna be our supporting foot and kind of move it towards the center of our body in line with our belly button. We're gonna extend the working leg up. We're gonna lower it to a hovering point above the ankle bone, keeping those hips pushed up and raise it back up to the ceiling. We will do 10, lower our hips back down, reset our hips, and do 10 on the other leg. And immediately, I love to pull into a knee hugger after that because my lower back is definitely a little sore from doing all that extra work. So, everybody ready? Hips are up, hands are down by our sides. Left leg has moved to center us off, right leg up. Lower, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, put those hips back down for one quick second. Reset those feet. Push up, move that right leg center. Left leg is now extended. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Hips down, knees in. Good job. Stay on the ground. <laughs> Our next few exercises are down here, which is nice, right? After all that cardio work, we get to kind of do some work laying down. Okay. Let's grab our resistance band if you have it. I'm just gonna check in on some of the con. Yes, hamstrings are key. Thank you for uh, believing that. <laughs> I have to say, in the last few years when I started targeting working my hamstrings and deadlifts more, my jumps got stronger and more consistent. So I'm a firm believer in it. It worked for me. So we're gonna take the resistance band again if you have it. This exercise is totally um, productive body weight only. So don't freak out if you don't have a band, but definitely hop on Amazon and buy yourself a set. I recommend the company either Perform Better, Wad Fitters, W-O-D-F-I-T-T-E-R-S, 
or Spree, S-P-R-I. Those are the three uh, companies that I have all my res resistance bands by and they're awesome and they're not expensive and they're a great tool to keep with you. Skating bag, if you travel a lot for work, even if you're not an athlete, get resistance bands. Okay, so we're gonna go tabletop position. I always start with my left leg if you haven't noticed that. I'm gonna extend my left leg back and I'm going to lift. Okay, now I'm not looking for my highest extension ever. What I need is to keep my shoulders stable. My, my weight does not pop, make my hip pop out to the side and I'm not opening my hip. Um, if you cannot put your weight on your hips, you can completely do this in a plank position. You're, you're still gonna put more focus on not letting your hip pop out. So you can drop down to those forearms for my, uh, my, my, my friends with the troubled wrists. I'm gonna stay on tabletop just cause it helps me see my vision and make sure you can see me in the camera. Okay, so we're going to go from our leg raises and we're gonna hit those hamstrings again cause once we hit that last one, we're gonna curl with the heel flexed. And the work again here is to keep the knee level. If you're dropping your knee to pull your hamstring in, you are doing absolutely no work because you have now relaxed the resistance band and you've probably sunk into your supporting hip. So don't waste the energy doing nothing that's gonna benefit you. If it gets too hard, take a rest. So extend that left leg back. I'm gonna keep myself a little angled so you can see me. Um, trust that my shoulders are level and my hips are square. And we're gonna lift, we're gonna do eight and eight on these because it's gonna be a little bit tiring on that glute. And lift, one, tap the ground, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And heel in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Good, that's also another one if you happen to have ankle weights, it's a great time to throw an ankle weight on or like make that mental note and do it next time you do this one by yourself. Right leg back and lift up one to tap the ground. My resistance pan just flew up to my hips. I'm gonna leave it there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold it up there, heel in for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, I'm gonna hit one more, because I was requested for a lot of um, hip work. I'm gonna hit one, one more hip exercise, and then I'm gonna get into abs. So if you're kind of done with the legs and you wanna rest on this one, go ahead, because I know abs are a big request and you just gotta wait about two more minutes for us to get started in this. So keep these on. These are usually the exercise that makes all my students giggle. <laughs> they are called fire hydrants, so you can kind of imagine where we're gonna go with this. We're staying in that tabletop position, and we're going to just lift that left leg out to the side. <laughs> and what you're aiming for is to keep the knee in line with the hip and keep that 90 degree angle with the leg as it lifts as well, really just pushing directly from that right outer glute. So let's do 10 in each side. Kathleen, this one's for you. <laughs> Ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, bands off, butts on the ground. I'm gonna turn my mat a little diagonal because I think it helps me get the idea of my full range of motion. And also, got my Thor water bottle, so I am fully on board Superhero Saturday. Hope everybody's feeling really good. A good sweat, heart rate is up. Things are burning, but not aching.
Thank you for sticking with me this whole time. I'm having a lot of fun. I've got seven, maybe eight exercises left as far as, and they're all core. One's got a little bit of hip action thrown in there. So I'm sure there's, Kathleen's thinking, she said she had something on her list, but I haven't done it yet. You will, it's coming. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm grabbing my resistance band, not for the resistance band use, but for the way I'm gonna place my arms. So if you have a towel or a t-shirt, long sleeve shirt, um, hockey stick, broom, you can use any of those things. This is just, or nothing at all. But I find I do this exercise more effectively when I'm holding something. So we're gonna take, taking my band and I'm keeping it right above my thighs. So if you don't have anything, you can just have your hands right out in front of you like you're riding a bike but laying down doing stuff. So. And we're gonna take that and we're gonna push through our legs and up over our head. So this is what I would call an overhead setup. Okay. And then as we come back down, we're going to roll into each vertebrae one at a time so that lumbar spine is hitting first. And we come down and we rest head and shoulders on the ground. We push up and that's what our reps look like. So we'll do 10 of those. So we lay down, get whatever you're gonna use or nothing at all. Like I said, you don't have to have anything. Just make sure those arms come up overhead. Maybe you wanna hold your hands together so that you keep your shoulders square and you're not tipping. All right, ready and go. And one, roll down. Two, down. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, good job. Next, we're gonna do what I like to call a pendulum plank. So first thing, just imagine your body is at, your head is at 12 and your feet are at six. We're going to be doing one leg at a time because if I try to do both, I'm probably gonna kick things over in my living room. <clears throat> Excuse me. Forearm plank. Our range of motion, I'm gonna start with my right foot mainly because you can see it better. My right foot is behind me at six o'clock. I'm going to move it to three, keeping both legs straight and bringing it back to the ground or back behind me. If you actually have ab sliders, this is a great exercise to use your sliders for. But if not, just keeping your toe close to the ground so that we're not picking our hip up to move our leg is the ideal range of motion we're looking for. So hips are up, we're gonna do eight. Starting with our right leg behind us at six o'clock, bring it to three and back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Very good. That was a tough one. I don't have any um, modifications for that other than do less reps and work on it to make it stronger. Switching to the other side. Now that left foot's gonna go from six to nine and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Good. All right, here it comes, Kathleen. This one, challenging. I kind of hate it, but I have to do it for my hips as well. So what we hate is usually because it's good for us, right? So I'm gonna give you two options here. I'm gonna start with the easy one. We can lay on our side and just go through the clamshell motion. That knee lifts, the, our knees are bent. My heels are in line with my hip bones and my right knee lifts up. If you have a resistance band and wanna put that back on on your quads, this is also a great spot to put that band around you. The difficult version of this exercise is we're gonna push up into a side plank and lift that top knee away for our clamshell. So we'll be holding the plank for the duration of the 10 reps. So pick what you wanna do. If you wanna start and do a couple up in the plank and then drop down to uh, your hip on the ground for the rest of them, 
that's a great way to see where your strengths are and how what you're capable of. All right, let's lift that hip up. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And switch. So now we're gonna lay on the other side. My left arm is gonna go down. And then my right hip on top. Lift myself up into that plank and lift that top hip. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, got that one done. Okay, now we're gonna come back over into our forearm plank. Uh, I'm glad you like my pendulums, Lexi and uh, Kathleen, you're welcome. Okay, so we're gonna come back to our forearms. And we're gonna do, we'll start as a ba basic plank and we're going to lift our legs. I'm gonna show you from the side so you can see my leg range of motion. This one is a pretty simple movement. It is challenging, but it's easy to execute properly. We're gonna come out in our forearm, hips are nice and square, and we're just gonna raise our leg. The one mistake I tend to see is when the leg comes up, the hips come up. That puts a lot of unnecessary stress on our shoulders and on our quads, and that's not what we're looking for. So we're going to do eight on each leg. Eight's my magic number today, just so we can get through and you guys can learn some new things to incorporate into your own workouts. So on our forearms, we'll do eight reps per side and then switch so we can keep our stability and keep that one oblique burning a little bit longer. All right, here we go. Up on our hips, shoulders are on top of our elbows, eyes are looking right past our fingers, belly button is pulled into that spine, legs are nice and strong, leg lifts for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. We're gonna do two more and then I will let you guys go enjoy your Saturday. The last one, I'm just gonna give you a warning now, the last one's gonna be on the wrists with, I don't have a modification for it, so I'm gonna save that one for last so you can stick around while I wrap up um, and not have to worry about the exercise. So our next to last one is gonna be straight leg leg wipers. We're gonna lay flat on our back. Our starting position is a nice 90 degree angle. Take a moment, enjoy it. Get your shoulders flat to the ground, belly button is in. We're pressing that lower spine and we really don't wanna get any curvature here, okay? So we know that a regular leg raises straight down and straight up. We're gonna go for a side to side one where we're going to drop our legs kind of over towards four o'clock and slowly come back up to center and drop them over to, I'm trying to think of my clock, eight o'clock, <laughs> and then come back up. As we're moving our legs from side to side, we don't want the shoulders to come all the way up and we don't want our feet to touch the ground because then we're not working to keep the legs hovering, okay? So we'll do a total of 16 movements, that's eight each side, laying nice and flat, you're outside, enjoy the beautiful breeze in the sky. Ready, lower, one, center, two, exhale as the legs come up. Inhale to lower, exhale, three. Inhale, four, lower, five, down, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, four more, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Good job. Whew. 
Some of those side to side ones seem like they last really, really long. All right, last exercise. We have made it to the end. And like I said, I don't have any modifications. So people with bad wrists, if you want to give it a shot, I really, really enjoy this one. It's one of my favorites um, and not in the torturous way. I think it's a great full body movement. It incorporates a little bit of stretching, a little bit of core and a little bit of mobility. So those are three of my favorite things to do, especially towards the end of a workout. We're gonna start in a high plank position. I call these downward dog toe reaches. So if you've done any of my workout programs, you've probably done them. We're gonna lift our hips up and take my, I'm gonna take my right hand and reach it towards my left foot. I'm gonna come back down into my plank, lift my left, lift my hips, my left hand's gonna come to my right foot. Now I'm gonna show you from the side because this part I find very important. Our full standard plank position typically is a little too stretched out for our hand to effectively reach our foot um, in a stable position and get the work that we want for our obliques. So I tend to move my hands a little bit as I push my hips up. So when I go up into my downward dog, I take a slight movement back with my right hand so I can get my hamstrings down and really reach back towards my opposite ankle and drive my hips up and get the stretch in my right hamstring. Place my left hand in front of my right bring my right hand to meet it as I hit my plank. As I come back for the other side, my left hand shifts back so that my right hand can reach all the way to my left foot. I hope that makes sense. Um, if not, you can always reach out to me and I'll, I can walk you through it one-on-one -on -one with um, a dual video so I can see how you're doing it. So we're gonna do 16 and then call it a day. So let's get at it. Ready? And one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, and 16. All right, that was great. Um, I'll stick around for a, a little bit and if you have any comments, please let me know. Um, I'm glad you like it, Kara. <laughs> I've never done Pilates, so um, I, I, I like the name TikTok. It makes sense with the, um, I call it pendulum, so the clock reference is all there. You're welcome, Trace. I'm glad you came out for it. Um, I wish I could read the comments on Facebook Live. I don't know how to do that. Um, you're welcome, Lexi. Thanks for joining me. All right, everybody have a great Saturday. If you want to reach out to me with any questions directly, you can catch me on Skate Fit Jersey Girl, and I'm sure if you...